Good evening or good day to all APM community and those new to the research here listening. The APM podcast is being launched today with the first of a three-parter, a conversation with FPV and myself, Junipers. We aim to create a podcast weekly discussing all things APM and encourage questions or topics from the community. You will be able to direct these towards my private message in Discord. The hope is to liaise with other team members who will contribute to perspectives and discussions to the podcast in the future and build on real-time decodes and conversations. In the spirit of our ancestors and in salutation to the Creator, this APM podcast aims to encompass deeper understandings of the research and relatable current affairs. So, grab a brew and let's have a blah. Hi, FPV. We've had a few decent chats recently, which has led us to the idea of a Q&A session in the hope of arousing new interest and igniting ways to elevate Operation Rainbow Warrior to the masses. This list of questions is also designed to aid APM Research and FPV with his book regarding the last seven or eight years research. The community are also eager to know the minds and hearts of the APM research team a little better and to understand the workings of the realm, enabling the translation of living in modern times into the wisdoms, teachings and movements of our ancestors, unifying our spirits and hopefully finding our connection to the glories bestowed by the Creator. Okay, maybe a little background of what led you to begin the research, FPV? Hello, Junipers. And yes, we have some fantastic conversations, don't we? All right, some background. Hey, that's a lovely intro, by the way. Very nice intro. So many Thank topics you. and subjects, isn't there, that the intros seem to get bigger and bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, a little bit of background. Subject matter probably helps, right? A bit of background on me. Okay, I can't tell you too much about me because it's not about me, but you can tell you some background on the avenue that brought me to these conclusions. In yeah. 2015, well, previous to that, I'd been researching politics and all kinds of stuff, and I could see they were all doing especially in UK and the States, the the politics mirror each other. What they do, we do. So we're following their suit kind of thing. And I could never really understand why, because there's so many mistakes and things going wrong with their decision making. And I thought, you know, it's not making any sense at all. And every now and then you would hear something about one of them going to Antarctica. And, you know, it never crossed your mind much. And you think, eh, probably just a visit going to the penguins. But no, yeah, once I found Flat Earth and Antarctica comes into this, then it, you know, it started making a lot more sense. There's something bigger going on here and everyone seems to be missing it. So, okay, we looked into Flat Earth. Well, I looked into Flat Earth. And I did have a, a friend accompany me from... We used to moderate a, st uh, a news stream, a big news stream on YouTube just as a hobby, something to do, you know. I got dragged into it, but anyway. <laughs> it was me and Cat's Eyes. Uh, we used to moderate a stream, and I started going down the Flat Earth route. Um, it, we were actually following the Trump's... Uh, well, the stream was following Trump's uh, presidential election, the first is... Well, yeah, the previous one. Um, that's what the stream was covering, so I was interested. You know, I was interested anyway, just just to see what was going on. And a lot of people were asking me, you know, because I'm I wasn't American. There's a lot of Americans asking me, but I thought, you know, who who would you vote for? And I said, well, clearly your best choice is going to be Trump because <laughs> these other people are going to take you to war constantly. They're the warmongers. But anyway, you know, me and Cat's eyes, um, I was 
following all these um, flat earth channels, you know, just monitoring it and watching and had a good debate and some of the Globers and I realised that, I, well not the Globe, sorry, the, I was <laughs> having a go at some of the flat earthers. I thought it was funny at first until I realised I couldn't debunk this guy. You know, it, was only, it took me five minutes to realise, wait a minute, there's some serious <laughs> things going on here. So that's what kind of got me into it and and I thought, well, okay, you know, if this is, if this is not a spinning ball flying through space, what is it? And what's what's creating those luminaries and moving them? And who created the mechanisms that are doing that? That's what was crossing my mind right at that time. And I thought this has to be technology or something. You know, I wasn't actually serious. I, f I was just crossing my mind. I thought this is going to have to be technology for this to be something other than rocks floating in space, because you know, there's even no other reference than even you can use for that. So I thought, uh, okay, then we're going to have to, I think, uh, we'll have a look down the roots. What were the ancestors teaching? What's all this sacred geometry mean? You know, is there other, me is there other ways it can be taken? Is there any technological references within it? That's what I started thinking about. I've got, I've got to check all this sacred geometry, scriptures, things like that, and see if I can find any connections that would suggest technology being involved. And lo and behold, it's everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I started seeing it everywhere, and I thought, "Wow, how will we miss this before?" And it becomes, it starts becoming so much more familiar the more you look into it. You start recognizing the technology and knowing how it works. You know, after obviously after time and studying it. So that was Is what brought me. Moment? Sorry. Sorry, was there a eureka moment? Yes, there was. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, the Nazca lines. When I was using the decoder, the Nazca lines. Decoded? Sorry. Was that your first decode? It was. Yes. Yes. Nazca lines were the first avenue I was looking at. Really. Oh, well, I mean, I was looking at other things as well, but the Nazca lines had me attention because you know I've looked at them before and not you know not trying to work out what they were. I've just thought you know it's amazing these big, giant glyphs all over the place in deserts and crossing mountain tops and everywhere. And uh, the, when you look at the mainstream, well, the people's theories of what they thought it was, none of them made any sense. It was all aliens, UFO, blah, blah, blah. But when you've debunked the globe and outer space and aliens, you know, that's all fantasy talk. So you can rule them out straight away. So then I'm looking at them thinking, well, okay, is there any technology hiding within the Nazca lines? And lo and behold, I started noticing different types of antennas. I thought, well, is this, is this for real? Antennas in the Nazca lines? And yes, there is a few different types of antennas in there. And then I started looking at the um, certain glyphs, and I could see how it could be used, like you know, to high high frequency, like volt, high voltage, things like this, high frequency. Like the birds, you could use them as a high frequency. You know, uh, birds high frequency, animals low frequency because they're on the ground, and the birds are in the sky. You know, I'm thinking along them lines now. These representing like frequencies and waveforms and things. The condor and the eagle yeah, being an example. Yeah, yeah, you know, there's lots of birds and then you've got ground creatures and you've also got marine creatures, which you suggest, you know, which is would be correct, you know, your subsonic frequencies. So yes. the whole frequency range is kind of there in glyphs and that was interesting in itself. And then when I discovered the, um, the Nazca Sun Cross, uh, I couldn't get a very good picture of um, Google Earth of it because they've made it really hard to see things on there now. They're making it hard for you to discover things like that. Uh, but I did find an image online which someone had taken. I can't remember the guy's name that put it online. But, you know, the, you'll, you'll find copies of it online. Of, of various people's uploaded it there, you know, what they've drew, drew of it. So I took that and um, I overlaid, you, you'll see the six halos crossing over this grid that I made. I decoded the six halos from somewhere else. I've never told anyone how and I'm not going to because <laughs> that's unique to me and you, <laughs> they don't need to know that. But I've placed them like I did and so you've got the six concentric circles on a grid of 144 squares. And I think, <laughs> This is something very, very amazing we're looking at here. This, you know, this is what they would call a class one geoglyph. It's very done with high intelligence, but yeah, what, what is it? What does it represent? So I thought, well, I've got to put this on a map. So I started putting 
the the grid over different maps. You know, there was the, at the time there was the pizza maps were getting pushed oh. around, which we I knew quite quickly in those days was uh, this information map. It's designed yeah. to hide east and west. I didn't realise that at the time, but after decoding what's going on at the international date lines, I realised how they were trying to hide it with these maps. But yes, once I put the Nazca grid on the Mercator map, it started making a lot of sense, and I just scaled it right until certain things started aligning correctly on it, and then I could see where the international date lines were, and some of this grid was going outside of it, east and west, north and south, and I thought, oh, <laughs> you couldn't make this up. On it. That's when I had a eureka moment when I looked at it, and it was like a million little bulbs came on in my mind. And I started, I could see everything, how it worked, how they faked World War II, you name it, it just, everything flashed through my mind how this works. In a split Amazing. second. <laughs> you see that in movies, and it's nothing like what they show in movies. It's quicker than what they show in movies. You see a hell, you know, you see a lot of things faster than what I've seen them portray in movies. And you, and you can absorb it and, and access it at the same moment. It's It's weird. But that's what I, I, that was a big eureka moment, the biggest they've ever had. I mean, you're, you're always going to get eureka moments in this. Aha, moments all the time. But not one as big as I got that day. <laughs> and I couldn't believe what I was looking at. You know, I'm questioning myself now. Am I really discovering this? Is this for real? You know? And it's just, ever since, it's just kept proving itself. You know, I, can't, I won't elaborate too deep on it all because uh, it's probably better in a book, this story. But, you know, that was the Eureka yes. moment. That was definitely the the biggest Eureka moment I had because I could see it all, the past, present and future. Everything flashed in my brain at that moment. I could see the good of this, the Just, bad of this, yeah. how what can and can't be done with it, or how it's been used in the past and present and how it could be used in the future. But, you know, there's where you have to pull the reins in a bit. This is not our technology. Whose is it? Yes. It's the creator's glory. I'm, I'm getting the TARDIS yeah. moment coming across here, FPV. The TARDIS moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rose look gazing into the TARDIS. It's a, it's a brilliant reference to that because that's what it feels like. You've looked into something that's just going to consume you the more you look. And it does. Yeah. It's consuming me, but I enjoy it. Yeah. And, and I'm always going to warn people, you know, be, if you're going to look into this, mm -hmm. be, expect to be consumed by it, because it never ends. I've been doing it for about eight years now, and, you know, all the team members looked in and doing it and still poking around with things. And it does. It's, you know, eight years have gone by in a flash. So it will consume you. Yes. But, you know, is the journey worth it? Oh, yes. <laughs> Our ancestors knew this. We understood this a long, long time ago, which is what takes you down the route of politics, wars and all the rest of it. So, you know, you got to see how all that started and where all that came from and all the division that it caused. Yeah. So my revelations were that putting that grid over the map because I could see everything in a split second. Hard to explain. I can't even prove that, but I think the work speaks for itself. And it's not just my work, you know, I'm speaking on behalf of a team that's got bigger and bigger as we've progressed along, because I'm the first with me, I can't do this myself. And even, yeah, to, even, even today, we can't, <laughs> we haven't got the team big enough to cover this, but, you know, we're slowly expanding, we're doing okay. I don't worry. Yeah, there'll be, there'll be a tipping point, won't there, and, and you know. Yes, yes, it's going to, it's... it's It'll become more public, won't it, and recognised and more aware, and then you know you're going places, which is yes. the ultimate, which is the ultimate goal. There's that um, question, of course, of the globe and flat Earth, and you know, I'm going to answer this very quickly. But are they the branches of the same indoctrination tree? I mean, that's linked. Yes, it. yes, it is because the, the you know these people have to gatekeep every avenue. They've got to keep yeah. gatekeep and control the narrative in, in all these arenas. You know, they're not just fly off that they're doing it, and there's lots of arenas on YouTube mm -hmm. or you know on the internet, and they are, they're, every one of them is gatekept because of this topic. 
you have to get, keep all these extra subjects that come with it, all the sciences that come with, you know, reality and what mainstream are telling us. So there's lots of channels and disinformation channels and sock accounts attacking you and things like this going on in the background. You know, people don't see what's going on in the background like we've seen over the last eight years. We know who's who in this, in this community. Well, this <laughs> community, yeah, in inverted commas, this arena... We know we, you know, you know, there you can tell their walk, and yes, you know, you can spot the disinfo agents a mile off, especially when they're not, it, they're going out of the way not to promote you, but to try and get access to your content and then attach it to their nonsense that they're selling. That's what we've caught a lot of them doing. So, you know, that tells me these people aren't here for the truth, they're here to make money and disinformation. So, yes, there is a massive divide in this flat earth arena. Yeah, minions for the masters, I call them. Um, lots of, you know, there's, there's, be... there's lots of theories, maps and models, you know, we've debunked them all. Ours works, we have never been debunked in eight years. If it got debunked, I wouldn't worry. It's to, For us, It's there's more to this than just the map. The map's just part of this. This is something bigger than the map. This is what's below the map and beyond the man's fake barriers is what this is really about. Yeah, it's just a pinpoint that you started with, isn't it? I mean, yeah. why lie about the shape of the earth? Why, 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 why is anyone lying about the shape of the earth? What would you say to that? Great question. <laughs> yes, great question. Because we've asked, you know, we've been asked that before. And once over, we couldn't answer that. Now we can pretty much say because of how it works and who created it is why it's been hidden and lied about, because this, this is a technological construct, the Creator's glorious technology, that over time have became, have many names, every culture's got a different name for it. Uh, the name we're using in modern times is angels, that is the technology. This is the technology of the Creator, this is the Creator's tools, tools of creation, is what we're revealing. And then we get asked questions like, well, where's the Creator? We don't know. We can honestly say we don't know. You know, hopefully they're out there making more of this. <laughs> We've no idea how big this is yet. But to put it into context, look at the sky, right? Not to, not to, <laughs> not like the globers do to point out a light in the sky and say this, you stand on a globe because you're pointing a light in the sky. That's ridiculous. Look at the sky, then start gauging the size of the, the diameter of the sky. How wide? Did, how far does it go in all directions? Then you've got an idea how big the landmass might be. Because it doesn't matter how far out there you go, you're not going to find an edge. Do you know why? You're going to tell me. <laughs> yes, I'm going to tell you. Because if you found an edge, that would suggest you are floating on something, floating in a vacuum of space, which we know doesn't exist. It's impossible. Which yes. then tells you this has to be an infinite plane. There's no other way around it. You... Well, you arrive at that conclusion. This is unknown scale plane that we're standing on. We don't know how far it extends in any direction. Eternal. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be an infinite plane. You know, we, if you found an edge, then what's what's down there, you know? What's, what's it standing on? <laughs> you, yeah, you know, common sense tells you it has to be That's infinite. That's a question we need to ask, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. you know. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good question, because not many people will probably be able to answer that correctly. You know, a lot of these maps and models are putting you in a contained model. They don't want you going beyond the date lines and seeing where the stars and the luminaries come from and go to. That's what the map, uh, the globe and the pizza maps are designed to do. They're designed to hide east and west, where these lights are coming from and going to. So, confusion. Yeah, yeah. They, what they've done, you know, look at the map and grid we use. If you look down the sides of uh, Antarctica, you can see it's a straight line cut down both sides. They've took a bigger map, cut it than those locations, and wrapped it around a ball, invented Google Earth, and that's the globe. That's all they actually have. <laughs> the, you know, the globe has have got Google Earth, a bag of cartoons, and a shitload of excuses. That's pretty much that's pretty much the globe. Another circus. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, it's gatekeeping, and these two factions actually work together in this arena. Believe it or not, mm -hmm. they're, they're all they're all attacking each other, and they're keeping it um, globe versus pizza map. It's a false dichotomy. Neither exist. Mm. 
Now, if I see anyone displaying that pizza map, you know, I'll, I'll know that they're an idiot. It's someone that hasn't done the research or it's someone trying to sell you this information. There's no in-between. Yeah, a character, an actor. Yeah, you know, yeah. my advice to anyone, do your own research. Don't take my word for it. Uh, if you do your own research and do it correctly and honestly, you will arrive where we are on the map. You would never find the model because we were already decoded it anyway. But I can't see anyone else going down that route and decoding what we have when it comes to how this works. It's a straightforward debunk of any of those theories, isn't it? Go and your advice would be go and go and do your research. Yeah, you know, don't get attached too much to attach to a map. You know, I'm not attached to our map. We know it works. We know it can't be debunked. We've asked them. We've told them the data they need to debunk it, which would have to be, you'd have to cross the Pacific and use independent GPS captures yourself to prove you crossed the Pacific Ocean because when it's rolled out level. Half of the Pacific's in the east and half's on the west, which shows they've joined two different oceans together to make the globe. That's what they've done. That's where they, that's where they put the cup there and wrapped it around the globe, around the, a ball. And this is how, this is how Google Earth works. That's how Google Earth works. They, they've took the images from this map where they've cut it, they've put it in Google Earth, and it's got algorithms built in that round the images off when you zoom out, and it eventually creates a globe. <laughs> That's where that's the only globe that actually is, <laughs> apart from the soy ones you buy in the shops. <laughs> so that's the, and that's what people think they live on. You know, perhaps they imagine if you zoom in on Google Earth, you can see people waving. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but no, that's the globe. That's all it is a cartoon ball. And all the cartoons and fakery in space and all this thing that they're doing with the ISS, it's all to fake. Man's doing things up there when actually. They were already here doing them themselves, like the ISS. It's not something man-made. It was already here. It's part of how the sun yeah. works. It's part of the technology yeah. that creates the sun. Um, I've got an ISS question somewhere, but I think it's further on. Mm -hmm. Now you want to um, sort of answer that one, don't you, about the... Equinox, etc. So, the solstice, sorry. Yeah, we'll get so, to them. Do them in the order, yeah. you know, that you got the questions in. How would you like to see um, Operation Rainbow Warrior grow? Um, how would, you know, how would you like to see it grow? And um, I know we say everything will grow as it's meant to as well, so I get that. But, you know, you, you put it together for a reason. Would you like to elaborate on that reason? Yes, the reason I made Operation Rainbow Warrior so is it can include everyone in the world because the, these rainbows are literally everywhere in the world. So it means anyone in any country, outdoors or indoors, you don't even have to go outside to do this, uh, can help by capturing where the rainbows are and helping us put them on the map. And when we map them all, people's going to see a, a really big picture of where all the angels are. So that's an important one. It's probably the most important project because it's evidence and proof of what we've been saying all along. This technology resides below and this is the signature of it, the rainbow. So that's why that one's important. And it's not just Operation Rainbow Warrior that's running in case people thought we were just going to do with that now. It's not. It's, we cover everything still. All the other avenues we're still going to be looking into and going further with them. Any decodes, I mean, obviously, they're going to be connected now because, you know, everywhere this technology is, we're going to find a rainbow anywhere. And what that leads to is more research into these areas where we're finding them, like with your own discovery, Juniper's uh, the Starforth. You know, we're starting to see an older picture here forming, aren't we? It's not, not just a modern thing, this. This has been going on a long time. These are, people have been marking where this technology is for centuries, thousands of years. All the old markers are still here. You know, your stone circles, your, your forts, your star forts, things like this. And it, even up to modern times, churches and cathedrals, temples, pyramids, they're all location markers for angel technology. And that's what people, you know, this is, this is going to give people answers everywhere in the world for what they're looking at. Because don't you find it strange, all this sacred geometry in every country, and no one knows what any of it means anymore. Well, the insult to our ancestors is just astounding. And, you know, how 
they were presented as idiots in caves, you know, um, babies, you know, not being able to grow or, or decipher things. And it's very obvious looking at, you know, the geometry that um, our ancestors were highly intelligent and tuned in to how the construct works. That's very obvious. So people, yeah, you know, they will start discovering this and reinvesting again in the ancient knowledge. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it takes us yeah. back to our original roots. You know, there is a creator and now we, we know what the glory actually is. It's technology. It's always been technology. And back to that question again, why would they lie about the shape of the world? <laughs> because they want this. They want all this technology and the knowledge of it to themselves. So, someone has copyrighted the creator's glory to themselves and monetized it, is what we're seeing. It's been monetized. We're paying bills for something that's actually free. Free and plentiful in this world. Yeah. It wasn't designed for that, was it? That's enslavement. I don't believe so. <laughs> that's what you would call enslavement by taxation. But anyway, you know, that's where Operation Rainbow Warrior is going, isn't it? We're going to awaken them to... There is free energy. It's everywhere. It's, there always has been. The ether is moving free energy. Absolutely. Now, when we're witnessing a, a rainbow, what are we really discovering? When you see a rainbow, what you see in there is a, a torus field. Uh, the technology of the halo creates a torus field and we see half of the sphere above ground, the, the other half obviously being below. And this torus field is what uh, they use to harness the electrical energy within the ether. They, they steer it and control the ether and guide it where it's needed and the flow. Like you'll notice with tornadoes and water spouts, it's not just in the air, it's water. Water and air are full of electricity, you know, different potentials of electric in different tiny, what they call atoms or particles. They've all got different electrical potential and the way the angels manipulate that, that's the amazing science behind it. You would not think something like that was possible, but there it is doing it every day outside your house. <laughs> it's creating your own local weather and everything locally. So that's another beauty of Operation Rainbow Warrior. You can observe them in nature and show, they're showing you how they create nature in your neighborhood everywhere. Your winds, your rain, your snow, quakes. With angels every day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, you know, every, doesn't matter where you are in this world, you walk on sacred ground. It is sacred ground everywhere. So that unique to one location, it's everywhere. Yes. And this is, you know, part of a bigger picture. Remember, we're in a map that's got the North and South Treaties and East and West date lines cut off from the known world uh, to stop your access and what's beyond there. So, <laughs> you know, these things are everywhere and who knows how far out they go. We don't know. This might be a smaller part of something bigger. Our world, as we know it, could be part of something much, much larger. The mind just boggles and expands. It's amazing. And I know we've had loads of conversations like this, but mm. yeah, this is, yeah, this is something that um, expands. It, it opens the minds, you know, it yeah. opens your mind. This, yeah. it's because that's what they've done. They've sealed people's minds off, removed the logic from their thinking by uh, cartoons 24 7, what they call space, and all these agendas to hide this. You know, you, the programming, it's all there. It's 24-7, constant. A globe in a classroom. <laughs> Things like that. Yes. It's all there to yes. distract you from the reality. So this is what they've stolen from the world. They've stolen everyone's birthright. It's everyone's birthright to know how this world works, to know its true dimensions, which we'll probably never, ever get, but <laughs> it'd be fun exploring, wouldn't it? And yeah. who created it? We don't even know who the creator is. No one does. They may, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe they never wanted to be known. I don't know. Yeah, because the wonder would be, did our ancestors have any insight? You know. Well, you've, you've got to be careful as well because, um, you know, we could, if we start worshiping it, that makes us look 
very primitive, I think. You know, it's not there to be worshipped. Yes, you should be honoured for creating such an amazing world. I'm the first to admit that. That's It blows my mind. I'm, I'm in awe. But, yeah, <laughs> where was it going with that? <laughs> That's what it's it was. to be understood. Sorry? To under, it's to be understood and yeah. caretake. Yes, well, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, it's, it has to be, yeah, you've got to be, I can't give it the words, I really can't. <laughs> I'm lost for you words on that well, part. That's a new one. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, yeah, I'm lost on them words. That's, that's going to be mine. Started wandering and looked out the window and I'm seeing the construct for what it is and it's blown me away every time I think about it. I can't stop. You know, I you can't stop. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am in awe at the glory. I see the glory. I know what it is now. Cause that's something you'll never find. You know, ask anyone. What is the glory to you? Has anyone shown you the glory or proven it? I don't think they have, have they? No. They don't even mention it. They just say the glory. Yeah. Like, well, okay. What is it? It's decoded the glory. What is it? Yeah. Well, we know what it is now, don't we? It's technology. Yeah. The big secret. Huh? That's the big secret behind all of this. All the world's problems are because of this. Of what they're trying to do with this. Yes, and everyone around the world thinks that this is normal to be born into and to generationally carry this taxation, this nine to five, this worry, this stress, this survival mode of empire trauma. Um, and, you know, thankfully, someone in the world <laughs> asked the right questions, and that was you. So, mm. you know, and then obviously your team gravitated towards you so today is another um, opportunity I think to capture the minds um, of those that need to tap into our ancestral knowledge again <laughs> yes yeah they understood it and they used to teach it they lived this they, they lived this life it was normal for them to know this and understand it it's only a couple of thousand years ago that all changed mm. And with time frames again, you don't even we don't know, do we? With any, anything, yeah. so well, the only thing we do know is the four hundred year reset. So we can go back, you know, jump back four hundred years at a time. So it was either two thousand yes. years ago or, or less. I'm thinking, mm. I'm thinking actually less than that. Mm. It's easy to add uh, time onto calendars they create and things, isn't it? Yeah, and it's that's been floating around for quite a long time. That those, you know. But that's when that's when it all changed when they reset the calendar. So well, you know, however, whatever year that was, that's when all this changed. And I'm pretty sure they did invade just after a reset, which would make it easy to invade, wouldn't it? Yes, vulnerability the, and yeah, yeah. The countries on its knees and food supplies are short and all the rest of it. Yeah. So that would be the best time to invade, which is, you know, we're going into our reset now. Anyone invading now has got an upper hand, haven't they? Yes, parasitic entity. Yeah, you know. if, they're, if they're, you know, to me, they they take advantage of these resets, and I'm pretty sure that's what they're doing right now. They're moving, they're getting things in place how they want them for after this reset. Totally, totally. Uh, mm -hmm. I think anyone around the world should be able to see that right now. So, you know, let alone anyone with using APMIs. Yeah. Thank you. So it does, you know, you can see where it comes into politics and everything. This, it, mm. that's the amazing thing about this. It covers all the topics of the world. It does. It covers them all. Every tentacle is in every part of our lives. Yeah, it is, and they're, you know they're there twenty four seven trying to erase history and book burn and all the rest of it to remove knowledge about this. That, that's what they. The agenda's been all along is to remove all knowledge and information about this. They've invaded countries and destroyed their creation stories, stolen their codexes and burnt them. And, and we've helped them do it, you know. <laughs> like Christians, they, you know, they went to the States. Uh, went, yeah, they went to the States. And they, what they're doing really is, they, you know, they, they, how it works is this. After they invaded Britain... Within a few hundred years, they'd invented religion and started indoctrinating people with that. So all knowledge of this that slowly but surely started getting eroded to the point where, you know, no one knew anything about this anymore. Mm. 
and now and now they're beaten into submission with religion. That's what, and of course now you fight for that religion and you're going to invade lands for that religion and you install their system under that religion. That's what they've been doing. But religion's yes. a lie. A religion is designed to hide this and steal the glory. Because what they've done with books is they've taken the angels, the technology we call the angels, and they personified them into books. And that's how people got so lost in this. Indeed. I mean, religion has enveloped all the ancestral ways and, and converted them into that ingrained worship that you're just talking about and literal personifications. But um, they do pose a stumbling block for many who discover the APM research, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and not just that, you know, they've got the royals as well because that's another invention. Yeah. Where the royals fit oh. into it? Well, they're just the modern day Caesars. They still work for the same company. Another control form. Yes. Another taxation. Um, another authority. Mm -hmm. Another branch to, for people to get on their knees for. Also used in wars for king and country or queen and country, isn't it? You know, the, the yes. people will fight for the tribe, they'll fight for their king. Mm hmm. I think it's time people started fighting for the Creator and what they stood for. Yes, and their family. Yes, yeah, the Creator stood for all things good. That's what this world's given us. This is the guy we walk in the Garden of Eden, and they've turned it into a bloody war, a war zone. That's right. This is a perfect, all this division and world. divide and conquer that they keep doing. Your lefts and rights, your Catholics, your Protestants, your, your blacks, your whites, you name it. These people are causing lots of trouble between these groups that they invented you know in, in most cases they invent they invented these divides yes, they there did. was no divides before then but now it's it, everything's been divided and once or before they invaded the world was clearly quite a safe and nice place to live you know the, you'll find artifacts in different countries that came from the other side of the map and you think well how did that get there obviously they were trading or something yeah, yes. we were just trading like people do today still. But yeah, someone a, wants someone wants total control over all of this. And they want yeah, to play with it. You know, they want to play with it, you know, they're playing they're playing God with the creator's glory. The the technology. They're playing God with it now. Yeah, they have been for a long time for sure, using us to do it. Now, going back to the religious beliefs, um, there's been a few questions so put forward. So how would you decode Jesus for those that have inquired? Jesus was uh, an invention by Rome to personify the sun. The sun's uh, halo system, as you know, that's part of it. The halo that you see us in our recordings that people send in. That is Jesus, the sun itself. Um, yeah, there's lots of different ways you can decode that as Jesus. I've seen other people do it in different ways. But to me, that is just a personification of the Son. You know, in the in your Bible, it will tell you the Son of God. Well, the word God, if you look in your Bible, means light. So it's the Son of Light it's talking about. And it'll tell you, you know, Jesus walks on water. Well, that's the Son's reflection. There's lots of ways you can look at this and put it, you know, now you know there's technology involved, you've got to look, well, how do they hide all this and, and personify it? You know, what they're doing is personifying it to hide it. And this is where scholars are today still. They're trying to personify technology. They're, they're doing it back to front. They don't realise yet, but that's what they're actually doing. They're trying to turn technology into personifications and make stories out of it that didn't exist. Well, the AI story, isn't it? That... You know, it's going to have a brain of its own and it's, you know, it's going to overtake the world like Terminator. But yeah. it's being programmed, mm -hmm. you know. So it's always that it's not our fault. Shirking, you know, the um, the wizard behind the curtain One scenario thing. and they push religion and monarchies. and. One thing they've all got in common, these religions, you'll find there's always a scene with a, a lady with a, a child being breastfed. That's the son in a rejuvenation state, recharging. These are different ways they depicted this story of how this world works. You know, that would be 
That one would come from, say, Egypt, Isis and Ra. This is where the ISS in the sky gets its initials from. It's Isis. Because Isis yeah. is the female halo, which is Eve. And Ra is the male halo. Adam. So it's always, it's always yeah. a male and female connection going on. And together, they birth Jesus, the, the light that we call the sun. That's my decode of how they create the sun. This is this technology doing it, and in them times in Egypt, there was Isis and Ra. Well, you know, it'd be um, Mary and Jesus. There's another way of saying it. Mary's the big halo, Jesus is the light. They're forgetting the father, which, I mean, it says Mary was a virgin, doesn't it? So, But there has to be a father, and in this case, it's Adam, the, the technology that we call Adam, they're a smaller halo. That has to play a part in this. You can't, you know, yeah. th this is a male and female scenario going on. It's a male and female creation story. It's all male and female energies. Electromagnetism is what it is. Well, absolutely, that's why they're trying to dismantle it. Um, I mean, what other parallels have um, religions got, you know, with uh, personifications? The the saints, the, um, what the Vatican's doing is that all of the saints that they turn into saints are actually, you know, like churches and certain things. They'll have a name and a male or female name. They're actually location markers over the technology below them. The node markers, like a church would be a marker of a node under that uh, location. Yes. So they're all marking angel rooms in the underworld where these halos are below us. I, and I call them halos. What they are is in a big electromagnetic coil. This is what they're real what the real technology is and, and what it's doing. It's a huge electromagnetic coil. And you can either have it magnetic or electric or both. You know, they, they, they can run the independent of one another. So there's different ways, you know, there's different ways and um, workings of them. Uh, like in winter, Adam's obviously not running in winter because we've no heat, so, so the electric's not there. So we get all the coolness from... Um, Eve, Eve's halo, the female halo provides the cold in the winter and the water. <laughs> you know, she, she divides the matter. Her role is dividing matter, which is the female role in life. You know, you divide it, eggs in, in your ovaries, that, you know, divide and multiply. <laughs> this, is, this is creation. This technology yes. creates and we're no difference. You know, I'm an Adam, you're an Eve. This is how humans recreate. It's, 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 programmed into us and the, the technology is no different really when you you know this is where you get these words like the sex and all these names and sexes and things in holy books it's talking about the sex of these the, what these are doing not what people are doing you have to with holy books remove people completely from the equation this mm -hmm. is about the creator's glory that's been personified so you have to take people out that were completely out their equation you've got to look at the book these are stories of this technology being named this and this is their story. You know, this the Bible is a mishmash of probably 144,000 other books. Because I would say there's going to be one book for each angel. There has to be. If not, there should be. <laughs> because it, it was probably told... Like a manual. Well, yeah, you know, it's the human the, the human's guide to the construct. You know, this, the, all this stuff was being taught in ancient times. You know, you look at, it doesn't matter what we look at, any topic we look at, ancient or even modern, it all relates to this same topic. It all goes back to this technology. Buddha, Shiva, Moses, Noah, um, the Morrigan, the Dagda, you know, my culture, and, and on and on it goes. And they're all references to um, deposits of nature or... Or, or processes of nature, aren't they? Yes, nature's and the creation uh, process. Every the, single one of them. Creators, angels. They're the angels of creation. These are the creators too, wasn't they? Create our nature. Twenty four seven, they're running. Well, some of them, <laughs> not all, but yeah, you know, <laughs> there are cycles and timed events. Yes. Now, our ancestral wisdoms as well have been labelled um, now today as paganism in parts of the world, like I'm Irish, so, mm -hmm. you know, everyone says you're pagan if you're looking at your ancestral knowledge and, and understandings, um, and it's, or folklore, or mythology, and on and on it goes, you know. Yeah, they, they um, don't want you to look at what we used to believe in before they arrived. Exactly. 
Yeah. Now, how closely are they connected to the religious teachings, would you say? Example, the naming of saints, which you've just spoken about. Um, no, dif the no difference. The hijacking of... No, yeah, they're not, they're not different. They're all just using different names. All they've done is called them saints and carried on with the story. They've turned yeah. them into personified them into saints, and now people think that's all about people when it never was. No. I can't see any reference to people when I decode using looking for technology. All I'm seeing is technology and different names it's been given to you know explain its process or what it's doing or it's a male energy or a female energy it depends what the what you're looking at. But it's all to do yeah. with that, all the sacred geometry, um, glyphs, legends, myths, it, it all decodes the same. It's all the same thing. And what you'll find in the Bible, especially if you listen to Mauro Bellino's work, the Vatican translator, he, he used to translate. Uh, in 2017, he was telling the world then, the angels are technology. He called them robots. He could see, you know, you could see he was decoding, translating technology from Old Testament. So Old, Te Old Testament is not a religion. It's the human's handbook to this technology. And it's being, it's being converted from that into holy books. And Mauro Bellino is telling the world what he's telling them and decoding for them is not being put in these holy books. So they're completely removing the technological process away from the books. Which is, I've said that in the past, they have to be doing that. They're hiding it. And this is how they Creating do it. Creating the worship. Yeah. Yeah, they turned it into worship, which you know makes us look a bit primitive and that. The Creator would not want you on your knees praying over them. That's that is very primitive. That would probably be insulting to them. They didn't create this to force you on your knees to worship them. What kind of a Creator would that be? No, this is this this is a Creator that shows love. The, you know, they they reckon they clearly recognise that the, the um, our intelligence. An individuality. Been, yeah, they've you know they've they've created us as beings with this construct and the creator's handiwork created all of this, and yeah, you know how, how can you dispute that, knowing what you know now for, and how the process actually works with this technology. It has a, yes. it plays a very big part in us being created. Everything is reliant on this technology. Yeah, expand the mind, open the eyes. You know. yep, everything yes. everything in this world relies on this technology to function and work every living being do you think there's a simple technique to decoding that everyone can apply when looking at religious texts or creation stories for instance that, that simple technique like you know what would you what would you answer like? there probably is because um, when you know, I haven't gone through all you know the complete pile of books that you would have to go through to. I, once I found it, I knew what I was looking for, and I didn't really pursue going down them routes any further in, in holy books. I didn't need to because I'd already decoded Male, it. Female, before. sorry. <laughs> Male and female electric. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be. You know, I knew there's just going to be more of that, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. My <laughs> so I would say, look at our work. And then read your book again. Yeah. Read the book again, it'll make a lot more sense. And you realize, you know, Mauro Bellino told the world this. He said, there's more than one God in the Bible. He can see many gods in the Bible. So is that not pagan? It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as pagan. They're talking no, about you know, the creator's glory is multiple gods of the underworld. That's what it's really meaning. There's multiple, yes. there's many creators but they're, they're the creator oh, gods creation. yeah you know the, the ancients called them creator gods of the underworld and names like that and so they're 100 percent correct that's what they're doing and, you know that obviously it's technology and it doesn't deserve the name god in maybe a little g <laughs> but you know that's whatever the creator originally called them them names are probably long long lost and gone we don't because the angels probably weren't the original name these are more modern right. terminologies that we're looking at because over time, I suppose they've had to develop um, the vocabulary to explain these themselves. You know, um, like you find in the Old Testament, you, you find broken bits, like in the Book of Enoch, you find bits and pieces and then it'll go on to something else. And you think, well, no, I wanted to read more of that, but there's no more information on it. Where did it go? It, yes. probably, it probably did exist and it's been chopped out of that, hasn't it? 
Well, it's been stored somewhere, probably. <laughs> or, or, it, or it was being taken wrong and removed. <laughs> you know, if you don't yes. realise what you're looking at and it doesn't make sense, people might start removing it with the book because they're going to say, well, that doesn't make any sense, but only because you don't know what you're looking at. Yeah. So be cautious, you know, what's what's been put in there has been manipulated and modified to hide this, clearly. There's no other conclusion. You, yeah. you can't come to any other conclusion, can you, with religion other than it's been designed to hide this. By person it's a Jack and the, the glory. Story. Yeah. 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 You know, there's truth in there, but it's not about people. It's about the creator's Hello. glory. It's about this world and how it works. That Bible is the user's manual on how this world works and the technologies in the underworld and what they do. But it's been personified and lost into story. So, you know, how far into that can you read and get more out of it? I didn't want to waste any time on that because I don't think I needed to. We've already found what we're looking for. Yeah, we've been done dirty. And, you know, um, there's plenty of other avenues we can go down to prove that, like all the sciences exist in this. All the sciences of our world exist in this and the sciences in there people don't know about yet. Yeah, more revelations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is there any references to creation stories within the APM model from the from England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales that you'd like to decode? Is there anything that stood out to you at all? Maybe you're in well, your heritage that you know of or anything. What I would like to do is get a person from each of those nations and have them do it. You know, I can I'll help them decode it and show them what it is, but I would like a, a person from each to do it. You know, we have four, 14 members, one covers each country. Yeah, you know well, I'm on well, Ireland. Well, 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 I was, well, I was just going to say, <laughs> there's another divide, isn't there? But the islands. You knew that, didn't you? Yeah, you know. <laughs> we, need, uh, we need one for North Island. And one, <laughs> well, no, Ireland's one country. Oh, oh. You know, forget this divide that they've put there. Chuck that religion and all that divide away a minute, right? All you Irish people, your land's been created by the Creator's glory. That's it. It shaped it into what it is today. That's what's sacred to you. That land is sacred to you. That's what you're defending and protecting. It's not what's on the surface, people. It's what's below. That's important. So that's what you're defending, ultimately. Now you know it exists. Absolutely. And so... You, you, you're you going to put that call out there if anybody wants to um, look at their creation stories or... Yes, someone their, from, you know, um, yeah. England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales and any other country can join if they want. Oh, they've all got creation mm -hmm. stories and they all decode the same. So one from each nation, step forward, come and learn what you can and we'll show you how to decode what you're looking at. And you can tell the story... You can, you know, you can, you could probably do local tours on where they are, couldn't you? They're everywhere. You could, they're, they're, yeah, you could add quite a lot to your own video, yeah. You could, yeah, go yeah. as far as you want with it. So I'm pretty, yeah. you know, I'm pretty sure everyone that looks into this, yeah, and there's another thing, you know, there's a lot of Irish people in our Discord. There is. There's a lot of Irish, you know, who says the Irish yeah. are slow, they're the quickest off the mark. <laughs> they really yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You switched on. That's a good thing. You're all switched on. It's hard to find yeah. people that switched on. Go, you know, in this world today, they're all. Most people are walking around switched off. Mm, I think it's got a lot to do with the fact that we had nothing to do with well, the empire. As well. Yeah, so. the good thing is you you despise the empire the same as everyone else Obviously. probably does. And <laughs> yeah, and you hang you hang on to what's dearest your ancestors' knowledge and information and glyphs and tales and stories because they're true. They're just about this technology. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you sense. know, that's... Anyone from any of them nations, step forward, please, and come and join in. Let's decode this and show the world what it's all about. You want to change the world? This is this is your moment. Perfect. Now we're going on to space, and um, we've been led to believe that space is just out there beyond our reach meaningless to us on earth but also a fantastical aspiration for us to explore successfully brought to the world by nasa and other space programs and financed by us the people as per normal question here would be uh, the first one would uh, what does nasa really investigate fpv 
Yeah, good question. I've, I think I've mentioned this before. I think NASA's real role is care and maintenance of this technology and helping, you know, locate it, reverse engineer it and such. That's what I think their real role is. Because it's not been spent in cartoon space, which we know is just cartoons and nonsense and flashy graphics and things. That's all space is. You know, that, I was going to say this topic isn't going to last long. <laughs> but why, uh, you know, this is what people need to realise. It is the common denominators. You know, if these people are connected, if your country is connected to a space agency or attachments to one, if it's got nuclear energy... And if it's got particle accelerator ambitions or technology, they're working together with this, these other people. Because these all relate to the Creator's glory. All those three topics are there to hide the Creator's glory and steal it and reverse engineer in it. This is what's really going on. And the science world's starting to notice this now as well. Yes. You know, this is yeah. this is not new technology they're playing with. It's been here forever. It's been here since nature's inception, is how I word it now. Another gatekeeping, another research branch, another let's cast the net. Well, the space, the space part of it. See, they have to try and take the credit for things that's happening in the heavens. They have to say, oh, no, that's, that's us. That's one of ours when it isn't. <laughs> they can't do that. <laughs> So they're lying to the public, you know, they're taking the public's money, making cartoons or like the ISS, the people floating around on harnesses and using green screens and augmented rea uh, augmented reality uh, contact lenses and 3D models and you name it, it's just, it's just theatre. The, How's it really being manipulated, the, the whole ISS, you know, um, spoof? I mean, how how are they specifically? There's, lot, there's lots of reasons? there's different ways they can do it. You know, like the if they protect, if you see a scene where they're floating in space, well, that's just an aircraft in a parabolic dive. Uh, they dive and climb, and you get positive and minus Gs, and that let, that lets you know, the passengers in the rear they'll float around, which is what you see them doing. They're floating around in between scenes when the plane's climbing and diving, so that's easy to fake. Then you've got all the the. Um, technology fakes going on like uh, you know like holding floating holding somebody in the hand that's floating like a ball of water or something but it's, it's graphics it's not real it's not in front of the hand you know there's loads and loads of channels out there always highlighting the mistakes they make and how easy it is to debunk them it's being exposed left right and center yes yes it has yes. you know so this is these people just pretending to be up there pretending to be doing things and looking busy but they're just faking what the light in the sky has been them when it's not it's part of this technology doing what it's always done Robin Hood's worse I mean the the, the, the charge sheet is going to we haven't got a printer we, we haven't got enough paper to do the charge sheet officer <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's the sheriff of, Sh of Sherwood that I should have said. <laughs> That's the sort of entity we're dealing with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Being so far, you know, how deep the lie goes, where the money's been, you know, that people should think that now. Where's the money really getting spent then? Well, it's all getting spent below, because remember, they're now saying they've got 30,000 particle accelerators, which we know to be 30,000 angels of the creator's glory that they're now saying they own and create and built which they didn't Dolan. yeah they're already yeah. here that's why operation rainbow what is important we can put rainbows on the map somewhere before they go down below and pretend they're building something there like a particle accelerator because when they say well no it's already there we can see the rainbow sorry you're lying we've already mapped it mate sorry <laughs> you see what i see you see how important this program is operation rainbow warrior we can Absolutely. we can we can put rainbows on the map and know where they are before they even think they're going there to steal them and pretend they're building one below there, because that's what it's going to show. It's going to show us where they all are. 